showing up. Welcome, welcome. Say hi to Bill Squire, who is right over there. Creepy hugs, everyone. Thanks for listening to and watching this episode of The Alan Cox Show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share a cold one with the boys. Here's Mary Santora for your viewing and listening pleasure. Hi, guys. No babies. Hi. And uh, say hi to uh, Pound Cake, Cody Brown, who's back there behind the glass. Happy Friday, white people. It is, isn't it? It's a, it's a flashback Friday to what are you flashing back on social media? Pot pie. Um, I never said I was flashing back. I'm trying to live in the moment, in the now. It's 2020. Really? Is that an official resolution of yours? Or just currently that's how you feel? It is my mood. Hashtag mood. Yeah, can, it's just right now. You can also do Follow Friday if you want to promote another friend or something of like that. You post a picture of them, say Follow Friday. Yeah, I don't do that. I'm not promoting anybody else. I know you wouldn't. Mm. I know. I'm flashing back to yesterday when we were talking about Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Uh huh. You can go watch a little clip of that on my Instagram at Bill Squire. And then also, if you really want to uh, go where everybody's going right now, go to alancocho.com and check out Mary doing the Flex Challenge. I've had so many people text me about the remix. <laughs> like, that is the funniest it's thing. It's getting a lot of views, a lot of, uh, a lot of traction on that one. I haven't actually gone to watch it. I know I did it live, but I haven't gone to watch the finished product. Yeah. So I'm funny. excited about that. Yeah, the remix is pretty hilarious. I did get a good laugh out of that. I did post a photo uh, at my Instagram, which is Alan Cox Show, uh, of a box that I opened mere minutes before showtime. I got an email from the front desk, as is our custom here. I said, you've got a package. I go up there, and it is very, very heavy. It's small, but it's heavy. And so I go, you know, and when fans send us things, they tape them up. You know, like there's gold bullion or nuclear <laughs> secrets inside. So I get my uh, knife and I cut the thing open. And uh, someone named Chuck S. Thank you, Chuck. Um, I posted a photo of it. He sent me a five-pound bag of Swedish fish. Ooh. Which I've mentioned for a long time was kind of my uh, nosh of choice anytime I would smoke. Mm-hmm. But I haven't done that in quite some time. I haven't smoked weed in a long time but for some reason Swedish fish were never a candy that I was drawn to in any other capacity Mm -hmm. other than when I was high I would eat Swedish fish I don't know if maybe he recalls me saying that maybe he just sent them randomly I don't know if any of you happen to be partial to Swedish fish Mm -hmm. have at it because as I said it's a five pound bag those are for you you have to eat all five pounds it's multicolored oh I'll take all the yellow ones green and yellow have all the yellow ones Mm -hmm. So thank you, Chuck. Uh, He just left me a little note in the box. I didn't check the return address. He left his phone number and his email. So I'll make sure to email him a a thank you. Uh, And also thank you to, boy, I, I, I think it's Mark. I think it's Mark in Warren, I think. This is the same guy, if I was paying close enough attention, Bill, who sent us those Carhartt jackets. Oh, okay. He sent us a box <coughs> prior to our holidays. He just sent a random box of, of like, a couple of big work jackets. I got a nice hoodie out uh, of it. A hoodie yeah. out of it. The mm-hmm. jackets were f- way too big for me, but I, I said, hey, if anybody wants one of these, uh, and thank you. So anyway. Fits me perfectly. I get an email a couple of, maybe on Monday when we were first back, from the front desk again. And they said, hey. We were going through some packages. Oh, yeah. I think I saw you guys saw me open this. Yes, this was very disturbing, actually. <laughs> you got. I was going through some packages, and I we I guess we missed one for you, and so you have a package up here. Okay, that came while we were gone. For we were, three weeks. For three <laughs> weeks while we were gone. So I go, and I think that I notice it's from the same guy. And on the side, in big black sharpie, it says "Refrigerate after opening." Which or before. Ap- <laughs> ap- <laughs> refrigerate on, in general. Yeah, so this needed to be refrigerated. So I open it up, and there are three objects in there. The top one looks like it's still relatively intact, and I have no idea how. But it looked like it may have been a calzone, an uncooked calzone. Oh, they, all, they all resemble loaves of bread. Now, the other two things that are in there are, by, by this time, green and furry and yellow and white mm-hmm. okay yeah now there's no dry ice in this box you know if you ever order those meal kits yeah you know people love the meal kits we've tried a couple different ones you know but the thing that bothers me about those is there's so much waste with those because you're throwing away a cardboard box and you're throwing away a styrofoam liner and you're throwing away these giant hunks of ice that they put in there mm-hmm. or whatever right so these meal kits it might keep you from going to the grocery store but there's a ton of attendant crap that goes with them, right? These were just three pieces of food in a cardboard box. 
So on the one hand, I'm like, thank you? I instantly threw them all away because they were just rotten. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm like, who would put food in a cardboard box and send it to someone? It didn't have a odor to it or anything? Didn't smell, no, because I think if it's, you know, it, I Bread don't know. Bread doesn't really stink when not it gets really, old. Not really, yeah, know? so I'm yeah. not, you know, again, if this is something... Uh, and at th- least it did actually rot on, like, the 20-year-old McDonald's hamburger that still looks like it's brand new. Right. <laughs> I mean, if this is something, if this person who sent them to me made them himself, I'm sorry because they completely went to waste. Uh, but you probably had to know that uh, if you just dropped it in a cardboard box and sent it off. But I, I genuinely couldn't tell what they were. But, you know, Swedish fish, candy, sugar, you know, mm-hmm. so many preservatives. Those will be in there for. So feel free to take all the yellow ones I will. you want. That was my fave. Lemon flavored Starburst, Skittles, all that. You know what? I'll tell you something right now. Hmm. Swedish fish. Hmm. I have only ever had red. I don't I even. I have any. I have as well. Only ever yeah, had. I've but only... I'm assuming yellow tastes like lemon. If they all taste like red. I don't even think I knew that there were other colors of Swedish fish I didn't until either. he Charles sent me this box. Yeah, today. usually it's just the red. Wouldn't that throw you for a loop? If you eat them and they all taste like cherry. I bet they do. <laughs> Green one. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. supposed to be lime. So you think that the color has a corresponding flavor? Usually, with Usually everything. Usually, it does, I would say. With you know, gummy flavored uh, candy, not like chocolate, like MMs, obviously, the colors don't matter. Keep forgetting to bring your gummies. But you do mm-hmm. know those people who will swear to you that MMs taste different based you on the color. Not. They don't. Mm. It's a trick your mind plays on you, I'm sure, but some people will go to their graves contending. They, they go, well, there's variations. No, nope. there aren't. They're the, all the, chocolate covered. If you're a super taster and Dumb did this on Rover, a few years ago where he was able to tell which color he was eating because he... Like a blind taste test? Because he can taste the dye in the color. That's crazy. Yeah. I eat M&M's by the fistful. I don't even pay attention. I just pour them into my hand and shove them in my mouth. And then... oh, right, but that's, but, but that's just him That's just him. Uh, uh, maybe tasting the differences in the dye. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm not, saying. That's not intentional. Though. Right, it's People not intentional, will... but right. I'm saying you can, but it would... Make it accurate that they do taste different. Didn't we give Erica a bunch of different biscuits and she told us which fast food joint they came yeah. from? Yeah, she did. Incredible. Mm-hmm. So some people, some people really... Re- great mouth skills. <laughs> <laughs> they eat a lot of fast that's food. or yeah. Well, right. Alan, did you see the, uh, the audio about the basketball announcers talking about the dead dog? I did see that and it was funny except that it was pulled out of context. And so obviously if you pull anything out of context, it's going to be funny. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I'll play it for you when we come back if you haven't heard it. It's yeah, a guy heard it, yeah. talking about a dead dog, and everybody who was listening thought he was talking about his daughter. Oh, oh. my God. And so. Where's you know. Casey Kasem? Huh? Where's Casey Kasem. Kasem. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> come back and do a death. What is he saying? Dedication. Death dedication. Death dedication. <laughs> right. Yeah. But death I mean, out dedication. of context is always the best. Yeah. Guy was trying to work my exit. That's right. Oh, Guy's trying yeah. to work my exit. Mm-hmm. You never use anything out of context. <laughs> I'd say that. Hey, the Cleveland Boat Show is going to be here in a matter of days. It's the 16th through the 20th. Young Bill Squire is going to be out there on the 18th. You want to see him out at the IX Center. So if you want to go to the Cleveland Boat Show, I'll have some passes for you after the break. If you want to join us today, on the phone, 216-578-1007. Write them down somewhere. Jot them on your arm. 800-348-1007. You can text 35192. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio.